all those little cues, like if you see it, cue it. You're not being annoying. You're, you're cueing. As long as the player's not stopping, like they still continue to perform. We don't need to have a big conversation about it, but explain your cues and then use them often. If you don't mind, I'm just going to jump in again quickly around the, the sort of language that you use, Peter. It's really interesting for me. Is, so what one of the things that I struggle with as a coach is breaking down a skill into sort of its key components and then finding a way to easily explain that to the players, especially with, with, with something like kicking, because kicking is something that I've done and it's come not necessarily naturally, but I've done it for a long time. So it's more intrinsic to me. I don't necessarily think about what I'm doing. So when you try and break that down and re-explain it, it's quite tough. So mm-hmm. how do you go about breaking down a skill into its different components? And then on top of that, like you, you, you come up with some really catchy language for it that sticks. Like I know in kicking, you use like the rodeo arm and that's something that, that stuck pretty well and the triple threat. And so yeah. how, how do you go about that sort of process? Yeah, I, I suppose you're absolutely right. And, and those, those have been done on purpose to give, to give people, I suppose, I've always been really aware, like you have to give players tasks to perform, especially within a skill set. So, um, and that's why I'm so big on them. Like here's here's the task you need to be f- to perform. Every rep does count. We're not just doing a set of ten. We're doing a set of ten with perf- with trying to execute these things as perfectly as possible. Um, you can probably all relate to players that uh, don't give a shit about what you say and just want to have a bit of fun. So that <laughs> that is that is always a struggle. Um, and I, I, I really don't have time for people like that. <laughs> um, so when you when you find people that do, they're really enjoyable to coach because they do want those cues. They do want to try to do this as best that they can. So I suppose those are the people you want to want to give the energy to because they're the ones that are going to get get the best results out of that. Um, but if definitely, if I mean, still everything that I'm using and saying and um, and use it because I think it's so descriptive and gives people um, the cues. And if you can, when you are Mate, just on that, it. sorry, yeah. Instead of we're doing a set of ten, like as we're coaching, like front thumb pressure, turn your hand over, all those little cues. Like if you see it, cue it. Um, you're not being annoying. You're you're cueing, um, cueing the reps. As long as the player's not stopping, like they still continue to perform. We don't need to have a big conversation about it, but explain your cues and then use them often. Sorry, mate, you've already already almost answered that but do you coach do you coach the internal cues as well as the external cues or does it depend on the athlete you're working with and whether they understand what you're saying you know with our younger lads you might just say yeah yeah punch that ball forward whereas with someone who's a little bit more aware of themselves you can say about that thumb pressure and finish yeah. position a bit better or yeah do you just do yeah. it quite naturally you have to have this stuff explained first and um i think that's where i always start is making people aware of it, showing them, do they understand it? Can they, can they explain it back to me? And then that's the art of coaching, right? Is that when you are in a session and you haven't spoken to them for 30 minutes and you give them a quick cue, that's when you can get really good coaching happening. So if you guys do want to have a sit down or a presentation with your players of, of that sort of things you are looking for, then they're all aware of it, which means that you can cue better on the run. Definitely. And um, Pete, just on that on that presentation, it was it was class to dig in a bit a bit deeper because obviously we we've seen your videos in in your you know your your thirty second catch pass stuff in which is which is class and it was just it was nice to to hear the background behind it and things as well. So um, appreciate that. Thank you know thank, thanks very much for that. Um, for me, it would just be around um, you know once you've for, for you probably sound a bit nosy, but you coming out with playing, you know what I'm guessing you know your passion is is the coaching is the the upskilling players, uh, you know, skills and things like that. Is that, you know, what what drives you in that sense? What's your, um, you know, what's the future for you in terms of in terms of coaching? Is it the one to one stuff? Is it is it you wanting to get into a team and things like that? Or yeah, um, I suppose the the first part of this is I, I suppose I had a really privileged uh, and all the players that sort of got Tony Brown. So he finished playing and then two years later came and coached us and we all had a really privileged experience and, and got sort of um, 
he was able to just expose us to all these little details and and we were all we were all playing professional rugby and all of a sudden we get told well you don't know how to pass like you guys are slow you're transferring the ball slow and rubbish passing like that's the sort of we sort of had that moment of wow okay there's a whole another five levels to all this um and i think that that's what i get really excited about is when you get a player who is already playing at a good level. Uh, they think that they know everything. They're in an academy and they're doing the job, but then you expose them to this stuff. And wow, it has such a big effect on um, how they play, the contribution they can end, have. And that's what I get really excited about. Um, and just that every every rep count, count mentality. Um, with coaching, I'm really fresh to it. So I only finished playing two years ago. Um and I suppose I'm sure you guys listen to podcasts of, of coaches and stuff around like I'm not in a massive rush to get into team coaching because shit, she's tough on tough on the body and tough on the brain. Like <laughs> that stress will come one day, but for now, like I think the, the one-to-one stuff's really good. I am coaching the um, Australian women's 15 side. I'm, I'm doing the attack for them, but that's um, still semi-professional, which is just a nice little, nice little step to, get organized and get ready for the, the next one. So not in too much of a rush. Don't want to get gray too quick. <laughs> uh, no, that's class. I think there's as well, to, um, there's there's a few quotes back, you know, back over here in terms of, you know, the past and, is, and, and one that sort of, um, you know, can sometimes get me down is some coaches say, as long as the ball gets to that other person, it doesn't matter how it gets there. Well, you know, I think, after your after your PowerPoint and your and, and the videos we, we see that you upload is actually the, there is a massive importance of, of that ball getting getting to that to you know to your teammate with speed um, yeah. and 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 to me it's helping that other you know your teammate out making sure that actually you know the, the ball is traveling you know traveling up and, and, and the point is going to the chest so because then it helps that other player then make a better decision. So I think yeah. it, it it's nice to hear that you know that's the sort of things that, that you're coaching to you know, I, for, I th- for the best of the team I think so much of that is just lazy coaching by generally older older players that just want to blanket statement everything and move on like it's the same same thing with kicking keep your head down like what do you what do you mean by that like does that mean fold in half and keep my head down or what do I do with the rest of my body so and that's that's where my brain goes and, and I think there's so much of that you hear it all the time from sidelines slow it down you know play safe like <laughs> that we've got this plan that we're all trying to execute that we've bought into and in the blanket lazy stuff um yeah it's, it's frustrating so I know I know exactly what you're saying I'm pleased that you're picking up what I'm putting down <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think the language we hear around it is uh is outcome versus process and yeah a lot of the coaches don't care about the process it's the outcome but I think like you said, if you were breaking down passing into, into 10 different parts, I think this is where some coaches get confused is that some of the two best flyers in the world, they might have two characteristics of that pass that are different, but the vast majority would be pretty much the same. And I think, I think this is where some coaching goes out the window is they, they look at them and maybe the final hands position is different. So they decide it's a completely different pass. Mm, definitely. And, and I, I'm very deliberate with what I'm doing. Like I'm trying to build the the best the best players in the world. Like that's that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to build a club player that does enjoy rugby just for for rugby and socialising. So if that's where people are coming from, then that's fine. But if you if you're selling yourself as a as a coach that actually wants to improve players, get them to next level academies and pro, then and do it properly. So, Hey team, thanks for watching that Rugby Bricks YouTube video. Please subscribe to the channel. I want to point out the four passing sessions we have put together. What it is, is I coach you through these four sessions, 60 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest for 10 exercises. I coach you through, give you the cues, the tips. These exercises are, are drills that the professional use to keep their passing game sharp and keep developing their skill set. So I'd love for you guys to check these out. The link to these four sessions sessions is below. I guarantee if you get through those 100 passing sessions, those really important coaches and selectors are going to really notice your skill standing out on the rugby field. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you back here again for another Rugby Bricks YouTube video.